Finger paint, just get it done. <laughs> no source found. Oh, that's right. I don't think your computer's on. You're right, it's not. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. good because I said, I don't think your computer's on. I said it like three times and finally he went, okay, my computer's not on. Okay. I didn't see any lights on it. <laughs> I'm not a whisk, but it has a light. It's not on. <laughs> well, that was the first thing. It's a real PowerPoint. <laughs> Got it. I gotta pull something up real quick too. We got three minutes. <laughs> okay then. What time are you guys gonna be back up here today? Who does? What's he doing with Russ for? <laughs> Russ did or Steve did? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Morning. Morning. <laughs> 
online can't hear you without it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> of course you don't. Same thing I had trouble with the other day. Yeah, that's the one. There you go. Am I on? You're on. Hello. Hey, how are y'all? Good. Are y'all ready? Yep. Here's Avis. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Mary Fautek again asked for this. I think it will take three minutes to do what she asked. If it takes that long, right? If it takes that long. So in 30 minutes, I can do this. How many times? Uh, 30. That would be 60 times. Yeah, but like a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just do this once, and then we all going to ask questions. Not about this, but about anything. Because I don't think that you're going to have any questions about this, because it's hard to believe that we actually have an issue with this. And yet, Mary Fitek asked me to cover it, which makes me think, we have an issue with this. So, it's called suggesting someone break a lease. A lease is a binding contract. Everybody knows that, right? Okay. So, if you say to a person something like this, let's go ahead and get you a lease property, then we'll look for houses and we find a house for you to buy, just break the lease. <laughs> or you just say, you got sick and you have to break the lease. So, somebody has already said what they thought about this. Does everybody feel like that sound that David <laughs> made? Okay. So here it is. Here's what you have done. Broken the law might be liable for all the lease payments that they don't make, plus the court costs, plus the legal fees, plus everything that you recommended that they do because it's a binding, enforceable contract. And so my advice to you is this. And that's it. <laughs> it's the end of my PowerPoint. <laughs> you finished that in one minute and 20 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could yeah, do yeah, that. Exactly. We could do that. But stop, it, it or bury you, stop it or I'll bury you alive in a box. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, I, it's just Im almost impossible for me to believe that, but I, I'm presuming that it's happening in this office or the other or both. And so if you have anybody that you overhear in the, in the workroom or at the coffee pot or anywhere else talking to somebody about, oh, it won't hurt you to break a lease, that's, that's actually not true. I mean unless they have made arrangements in the lease for it to only be a 90-day lease or for it to be terminatable at any time for any reason by the tenant, which if you can find a landlord that will do that, we don't want to do business with them because they're not very smart. Or if they're willing to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or if they're willing to pay, uh, pay out the lease. How long the lease? And in all of those things, you just need to know what the complications are, what, what what is the obligation if a tenant breaches a lease? I don't know. You have to look at each lease because it, would, it could be different every time. So that's my And advice if you have somebody that needs a place like right now and hasn't found what they're looking for to buy, just do some research. There's apartment complexes and things like that out there that do month-to-month -month leases um, within the Georgetown area. So, yeah, don't just... just don't do this. <coughs> okay, who's got a question? On any subject, doesn't have to be this one, yes. Uh, fencing around campus. Yes. Uh, are fences grandfathered in? Apparently there's a law where you, like there's a, if there's a ladder fence, like a cattle panel or something like that, where they could climb up, are they grandfathered in as far as an inspector passing the fence? I honestly do not know the answer to that question. I do know that inside the jurisdictions of most of the cities, there's city ordinances about fences and what they have to look like around a swimming pool because of safety. 
of, of neighboring children and other things. I do not know whether or not if you use cattle panel or something somebody could climb up on either side of whether or not it's to be changed. Does anybody know? Yeah, insurance would also, and I know that makes it hotter, but that's, the noise is distracting. I would, I, you know, I would be real careful with making sure that a buyer was aware of, you know, because their insurance company, what if, what if the seller's insurance company hasn't been out there since they added the fence and, and they don't know what it looks like and the buyer's insurance company comes to examine the property a few days after closing? They send somebody to inspect the property, a visual inspection, and they see this fence, and they fail to cover the property because of that. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I was thinking about when you said insurance, mm -hmm. is because they, they have, insurance companies in Texas have a right of rescission for some enormous amount of time after closing that they can rescind your coverage if they find something that they don't like, it's, it's maybe six months. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, does anybody know? Because I don't. I thought it was 30 days. I had a waiver clause. Yeah. I don't. Th I think it's. Well, they could have changed it. It, it. it used to be a whole lot longer than 30 days. And it may I, I don't know. Because we, we fought that battle actually legislatively a long time ago and we lost that part of it because we were fighting for 30 days. I, they may have gotten that changed. I don't know. I'll so I would, right yeah, I, would, I would look to the city for ordinances or have the seller do that. And I would have the buyer, which I think is always good, to have the buyer have insurance quoted during the option period and have a clue report pulled. Mm -hmm and have them examine the property and see if they're gonna make it because, because as a seller's agent, you want that done for sure because property approval runs all the way to closing and insurability is part of property approval. So if, if, if you have a clue report that shows, like we've had two lately where a seller got a big payoff to fix a roof they didn't fix. And, and so, you know, they just put the money in their pocket. And so now we've got a property that may not be insurable by a subsequent insurance company who sees a clue report and sees, in, in one case, it was like $34,000 payoff mm -hmm. to the seller to replace a roof that they never replaced. Insurance company number two may not insure this property without a roof on it. Scary stuff mm -hmm. that you may not think about. Yes, ma'am. Would it also be a lender required repair? Might be. Lenders? If it needs a new roof? If the appraisal calls for it, then it's going to have to be done. And it can put you on the spot, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got any advice for him about the fence around the pool? Okay. Somebody got another question? Yes, I did. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Good, good question. A lot of new agents. What's the clue report? Comprehensive Loss Underwriters Exchange. It's like the big database in the sky for all insurance companies. And it follows the property, and it follows, follows the owner, and it says every claim they've ever made, every claim they've ever paid on this property. And so if I'm an insurance agent, and I'm going to give you a quote on your house, I'm going to pull a clue report. I have the access to do that, and it's gonna show me every, every Every claim the seller made, every claim they ever paid, even the claims where they didn't pay anything, will be on that. So we get that from an insurance agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And is it on that? I, I, this is a on the the seller's disclosure. There's a part of that that addresses that. If yeah. They, I'm just wondering what the legalities of it. If they they hadn't didn't disclose that. Didn't disclose that, and then turn around and it shows up there. Is that? Yeah, that's huge. That creates all kinds of issues, and not the least of which is the buyer now thinks, what else didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, you knew about this, what else didn't you tell me? Yeah. I was, how about the, the buyer? Uh, and I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but say a buyer is going to buy a house, and, and they, doesn't their claims on their Previous house follow them also? It might, yeah. 
You're gonna have. To, I've heard. I've, yeah, I've heard that too. And they needed. Yep. The way I looked at it on that one time I went to a listing appointment, they didn't use the money for the roof. They did wood floors and granite countertops and everything. And my <coughs> attitude is, if they are frauding the title company, what are they going to do? Insurance company. Do insurance company. What are they going to do to you as an agent? How honest are they going to be? Yeah. I don't know, and and you see it as fraud. Somebody else may see it as I got a gift from God but from this insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's how the attitude of some of the people who are responding in that way. On the one that one of the ones recently uh, had to do with a insurance claim where there was a water intrusion incident and uh, it affected some cabinets and some wood floor in one room, but the payout was for the wood floors in the whole downstairs of the house. They did not replace them all. They only replaced the ones where the incident occurred. And so my advice was to have the seller disclose that on the seller disclosure and write it in their own words what they did so that when that, sh when that shows up, which it will, on the clue report that, that the buyer knows that and they can make an dis informed decision on how they want to operate or what they want to do. And what, I just, I just don't know. So. Because the challenge is if there was ever a claim filed on that, they wouldn't necessarily cover all of the floors again. They may only cover the section of the floors that well, were actually replaced. Yeah, and, the, and the, that's exactly right. And. Uh, this is not a necessarily an issue for us, but this is a huge issue in the Houston area. If you've ever had a flood claim and, and it called for you to replace all of the cabinets and you only replace the lower cabinets and then at some other time you have a flood that's higher than that, it's not going to cover the upper cabinets twice because you didn't pay to do them the first time. So, you're, so they tell all the Houston people, we train all them, take pictures before and after on a claim showing construction so you can prove what you actually did in fact replace. Yeah. Fun stuff. Way more than you wanted to know. What else? Come on guys, you just like not have enough. I'll have one. Okay. So um, we're closing on a deal next week and uh, we just found out about um, 10 days ago that there was a clear report and they had $15,000 worth of water damage from a bathtub overflowing. And um, well, people have only been in it for four years. So they were in it for two, or no, three years, and then they're just now selling it to us. Do they have to disclose that on the, on the seller's disclosure? It wasn't on there. So, well, well, technically, and I believe the lawyers would tell you, if you've fully remediated the problem, you don't. Right, the, do. que the question is, how is the buyer going to feel who gets a clue report from their insurance company and it shows a claim? How do you substantiate that they actually fixed it? Pictures. That and uh, <laughs> what, I would always, what I would advise you to do is get a clue report before you even get your inspector into the house. And the reason why is because if you see that there's $25,000 in water damage, you can say to your inspector before he gets over there, I know that there has been a claim on this property for water damage at some point in time. Can you be really looking out to see if you see anything that you think may not have been addressed um, from the claim that they had before? Diane, do you have a hand up? <coughs> Normally when you have yeah. that, a water claim that um, the insurance company hires like a service company that comes in and they have probably 30 pages of detailed reports mm -hmm. and it'll have pictures before and after. Yeah. So keep it and don't lose it. I always <laughs> tell everybody when they fill out the seller's disclosure it's a spoo document. This is where the most lawsuits come that's, from. So and that's correct. Sure <laughs> that is correct. And a good I know it. we use the TAR form, but on the TREC form, it doesn't ask for any of that. Yep, it's because it's not statutorily required. Okay. And yet, if you have knowledge, you're supposed to disclose it. Right. 
And if you don't disclose it, your neighbors probably will. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you have a property and it has a, uh, someone that's already been appraisal on it before you sell it, do you have to disclose that appraisal? No. Okay. That's an opinion. The only part I would say caveat to that is that the square footage is different. Check the square footage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've, we talked about that a couple weeks ago uh, on not, 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 Dallas Company is in, is in the middle of a, an appeal on a lawsuit for a square footage issue advertised in, in MLS and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of money and uh, not, not Keller Rooms, but it doesn't matter, it's just another broker, which I never like and uh, <laughs> that, well, I just don't like for anybody to get sued. It's mm -hmm. just, it's so debilitating. It's not, it's not just, it, it really takes the agent out of the real estate business mm -hmm. because they, it just hurts your feelings so deeply. Um, but anyway, it, we just need to be real cautious <laughs> about square footage. And, and if you have, if you get an appraisal so that you, because sometimes you'll have a property that's in an, in a place where there aren't a lot of comparables. It's maybe not just in a neighborhood, it's kind of an out of the box kind of a property. And you may say to the seller, I'm, I've done all I can do. I would be much more comfortable if you hired an appraiser to help us put a price on this property. And if it's a significant enough price, they should do that so that we're getting it right. And then, and then again, you don't have to disclose that, but you ought to check the tax records against the square footage and see if you got a discrepancy, which you will, but see how much it is. <laughs> okay, I just got a strange email. Okay. It was from a lender, and they're, I'm representing the seller, and they're representing the buyer, the lender is, and it says, we run fraud tests on everyone on their transaction. Uh, what? Yeah. It says, what is your middle name? I don't have a middle name. We run fraud tests on everyone in the transaction and you're requesting your middle name. Have you ever heard of that? No. I thought, wow, I've never heard of this. this okay. Is Don't we? Yeah, from lending Mary Kennedy. Prime so lending. we got lenders in the this. room. What do you guys say? That, that's correct. Um, they, they have to do a background check on all the realtors and appraisers and everybody affiliated with it. Make sure there's nobody that's in the middle of a loss or this could cause an issue. So, there, we, so this had, is normal? I've had people ask for middle names, uh, and, but they check everybody in the transaction out. I've never heard it's of that. It's called the LDDG something is a financial report. <coughs> Rarely is there ever an issue, but sometimes if it doesn't pop up, they'll ask for a middle, middle name, middle middle initial, middle. whatever it is. So. Real estate oh. people have a background check similar to, uh, not quite as comprehensive as a peace officer's license but in order to get a license. So it amazes me that you'd have to check their background. Of course, that's not true in every state. Okay, and, and it's also every time you renew your license, your fingerprints are sent back through the database. So. They actually run the loan officer through it too to make sure there's no recent police reports that showed up. Well, <coughs> well, that's, it, real estate commission spends a lot of time uh, that's n this is not the right word. Investigating is the right word. Start to say prosecuting. Investigating people renewing their license who say, I've not done, you know, there's a place when you renew that says if you've been convicted of anything and, and, you, and generally people say no, even if it is yes. And uh, because they don't know that their fingerprints get checked again. And, and I don't know why we're all as an industry so stupid that you think they've got your fingerprints, they're not gonna check you every time. <laughs> And then, and then there's this big surprise when your third DWI, which becomes a felony, shows up on your record. <laughs> and you might lose your license for lying. So anyway, I just, that amazes me that, that I would be checking us on I've that. I've never seen that before. I think that we should be told that. That kind of bothers me. I feel like somebody's watching me that shouldn't be watching me. I was just curious because I've never seen that and they can't find Anybody else ever heard that? No. Isn't it great, Tommy? Yeah. yeah, you just happen to be sitting right next to a lender. Way okay. to make it awkward for him. <laughs> they will never sit next to me again. Probably. I have another question for me. I think the word probably um, is so strong there. I think they're just making sure licenses are current. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I, I got another question. The, um, 
other there's other real estate offices out there who are really? requesting that our clients sign a form from them that talks about wire fraud. Okay. ARA does it. Yes, that's mm -hmm. one of the companies that's doing it right now. There's a couple of other ones out there as well. Would we be, it, it, would it be in our best interest to have our clients sign a document from another brokerage talking about what their thoughts are on wire fraud when we have one of our own detailing it Did for Did TAR us. put one out in their last set of all our forms? Because I've been meaning to check and see if they did because I was going to read what they did and see if I liked it better than what our attorney wrote. Is it from TAR? I don't uh, believe ERAs or is the it The ones that I've seen own? actually have the uh, other brokerage information yeah, but it's on T it. TAR one could have a place for a broker's name on it. Um, I'd have to see the form before I would want to opine on that. My, my advice has been, unless you've had your client look over it with, a, with an attorney, don't advise them to sign it. Well, I hope we're still talking about that on, with every buyer and every seller about wire fraud because it's still happening. And if you, if you pick up a copy of the latest, I think it's the latest NAR magazine, which is why I looked at for a low ball last night, it has some really good fraud kind of information. That's pretty much all that magazine is about this time. Could we just have them give them a copy of what we have our clients sign instead of signing theirs and here's our form, you can have a copy of ours? I'm Absolutely. Totally fine with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we know what we're signing, but we don't know what they're signing. Well, and saying. Scott, I'll check and see if TAR did that. I, uh, they just came out with a, a whole bunch of forms changes that I have not studied carefully. I know the one that made me laugh the most was the bed bug addendum. Well, and <laughs> that's for leasing. But and, and I guess it's a problem because when I said it in front of a whole bunch of people, they said, this is a problem when you're in the property management business. Okay, I just thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> and uh, TAR also put some disclosures on the second to the last page about uh, FERPTA, about foreign sellers. Yeah, and a question, good. yeah. So they did what I asked them to do finally after three or four <laughs> years of asking. <laughs> Anything else? Else you are easy today. Got anything else that you want to tell us? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm excited about how the building is going uh, really fast. I met with the architect yesterday morning uh, to make sure that we, that every, that every question had been answered that I needed to answer, that he needed to answer, that we all needed to answer, so nothing is slowing these guys down for any reason. And we had a good visit. I have been asked and haven't yet done it to send out an email to all y'all and say don't go over there and walk around. They, they get really nervous about liability and, uh, and they, because they, I guess they've been sued by somebody walking through one of their job sets and falling down. Yeah, you can look through the windows. And we'll schedule some times, and we're, of course, going to have our big event down there before it's ready. Yep. When it is completed, are we going to have a parade or anything like that going from one to the I other? I think we should. signs and rejoicing and balloons and music and stuff? <coughs> Absolutely. <coughs> we'll probably have to go that way because we'd have to close Austin Avenue. I heard that you there. rode your lawnmower from yeah. one building to the other building last time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we have to get a permit to do that? Probably, but we're not going to. <laughs> Ask for forgiveness on that. <laughs> yeah. I did ride my lawnmower. I forgot about that. Yeah. Judy Koppel sent me a picture of it not long ago. Yeah. She said, I know you guys are moving soon. Uh, here's some ideas. We had a lot of fun. We did. <laughs> Everybody, like, uh, people brought wagons and put their dog in it. And we had people that we put some boxes in it and stuff. Oh, my God. And so, anyway, yeah, we'll have a parade. That sounds like fun. So the other day when I went down there, um, I walked through just to see how things were going. And there was, we, we had this awesome idea that in the front two conference rooms between the two of them, we were going to do barn doors to open it up as an additional training room. Well, when I went down there, the uh, opening was this high, this much <laughs> taller than I am. So it would have been really, really short barn doors. And the opening was only this wide, so having uh, the training room that, or an additional training room for conferences and stuff like that uh, wasn't quite going to work out. So we, we sent them an email and said, 
What's that? It might work out for you, Kent, but not for me. Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to make that a wall instead. <laughs> but yeah. And then this morning, I thought it was funny because um, uh, Shelly, uh, Steve Schleter's um, girlfriend, was going back and forth the about... The decorator. Yeah, she's our decorator. She was going back and forth about uh, painting and things like that. And I, I, <laughs> I, I responded this morning and said... I don't care what the paint is. It can be finger paint for all I care. Just get it done. <laughs> well, don't say that. <laughs> it was a joke. I just. Well, it's okay. Of the lobby of Round Rock. Okay, we're yeah. on. We're we're <laughs> on YouTube Live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, we are. Let's don't say anything else. I'll tell you later how I feel about it. All right. Uh, <laughs> anything else? No. That was awful easy today. No kidding. I mean, you got to do like 30 second ones for more often. Yeah. I couldn't think of any way to make it longer. Just uh, stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> I'll never forget that one time when we were in a uh, uh, meeting at, for Keller Williams International. And uh, you were, I think you were reading your email or something. And not necessarily paying attention to whoever was up front. <laughs> very, oh, and <laughs> very common. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is okay. Uh, and uh, the, they were talking about internet policies and what kind of social media policies that you have for your office. And um, somebody said, Avis has a really good one. Well, that's all she heard was Avis has a really good one. And they said, okay, Avis, what is it? And she just said, don't do it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she leaned over to me and said, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. So anyways, we, we'll start our TV in here about five minutes. If you got to go to the bathroom or anything like that, go for it. And then uh, we'll be in here in five minutes. For the peanuts? We'll, we'll have a guy running around. I hired somebody from Dell Diamond. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be awesome though, wouldn't it? <laughs> How are you, Johnny? Yeah. That project I was working on yesterday with my water heater. How'd it go? It was a loose wire in the wall. And it hit the wall. And I had to troubleshoot it. I replaced my thermostat. I checked everything. Checked my breakers. And my brother was an electrician for 30 years. I think I'm dead in the wall. I pulled out the thing. And a loose wire. So I did all that for one little bit but I'm glad we have a water bill. Yeah, it was supposed to be a one hour deal. It was an all day. But I wanted to find it. Are you? Hey, I'm trying to watch all the Yes. One day at a time. So you got all right, close enough. We're going to go ahead and get started. What's up? All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. We're going to start with a uh, quick 
inspirational customer experience moment. Um, I loved this video. I thought it was an awesome idea um, on, on, uh, on film. Don't ever try this with your clients though. It is absolutely hilarious. Enjoy, this is a realtor out of Dallas, Texas. You may have seen this at some point in time, so here it is. As an agent, I just want my clients to be happy. What do you think? Is this the one? We love the house. But won't they get a lot of offers? Yeah, but let me see what I can do. Not every agent would have hired drifters and hippies to hang out and scare off other buyers. Can we change? You were blown away. That wasn't exactly how it happened, but if you need an experienced agent to do just about anything to help you with your real estate needs, give me a call or text me today. You think he got calls from that? Oh yeah. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> How many, how, many of, how many times have we wanted to do something like that, to, if, especially if we're working with buyers, to protect them and help them to get, that, to get that, that one offer that was just accepted and they don't have to worry about any of the other competition? Stuff like that is tempting, right? Run out of the house screaming a mouse, a mouse, a mouse, when there's a lot of people waiting to do it. Yeah, Tina. So our ho the house next to us is, is uh, selling and we want good neighbors and my mom's Vacuum my front lawn if there's a buyer that I don't want. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> that, okay, so that reminds me of a, a script that I used to use when I would go door knocking and I was going to have an open house was, uh, hey, uh, I just want to let you know I'm having an open house this weekend. It's a brand new listing we have in the neighborhood. If there's anyone that you've ever wanted to live next to, let them know uh, that we're going to have an open house this weekend. And if there's anyone you've never, ever wanted to live next to, please let me know and I'll make sure I do not sell them the house. Uh, <laughs> so that would be a, a good way to do it. Go and vacuum your lawn. You get so many funny looks that way. So who came to the leadership event the other day? What were some of your biggest takeaways? Easier to lift someone up than push them down was my favorite. Easier to lift someone up than push them down. Yeah, okay. What else? That's it? My favorite was um, just how the different generations think. Okay. You know, kind of closing that gap and understanding. Yeah. Anyone else? Was this videotaped? Yeah, it's on YouTube. I'll send the video. Our, our KW? Our Connect KW? Um, it's not on there yet. It's on YouTube.com slash Scott Tolar, but I'll send it out in an email uh, today so that everyone has it. I had to finish editing a couple things together on it. But it's up and ready to go now. Well, no, it, ju it was just volume. <laughs> but he, yeah, I had to censor Avis. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyone else? I, my, big, my biggest takeaway is how passionate the two of those people are for people. Um, whether you're in real estate or you're, you're not, you're in some other industry, the passion that they have for every single person they come in contact with was just absolutely astonishing to me. Um, and those are two of my uh, uh, mentors and, and, and friends and I, I love them to death and I was so ecstatic that they were willing to come and share that with us. And I'm really excited about the event that we're going to have in, Mar in not March, in May on the 17th. Uh, we're going to bring in a body language expert who is actually, um, it's going to be awesome. The gentleman that we're talking to about doing it right now is a Texas Ranger and he works with the Secret Service on uh, mm -hmm. training them how to read body language. April 17th. <clears throat> it's Mar uh, May 17th, and it's going to be at the Georgetown Police Department. Um, so it'll teach you how to read body language of people that you're working with as clients. It'll also teach you about when you're in situations and you're just unsure about people and how to really read their body language and what, they're, what they could be potentially thinking about doing next. It's gonna be a really, really awesome class. So that'll be on May 17th, and that's going to be our next leadership event. Yes? There's a book, it's kind of older, but it's, it's awesome. It's, it's called um, Gavin 
Jonathan Becker's The Gift of Fear. Okay. And it's about it's kind of about a lot of it, I, I found it to be hugely helpful. Good. For what? Body language? Um, trusting your gut, realizing your subconscious <laughs> picks up so much more than you realize, and yeah, body language and, mm -hmm. and why things, yeah. All Good. Um, I want to show a video now from Tom Ferry. He actually just posted it this morning and I saw it and uh, I wanted to share it with you guys because he talks about leads and relationships and which ones you want to have more of. Um, and obviously we'll want to have more relationships, but he does a really good job talking about how to make sure you're coming across the right way uh, to the people you have relationships with so it doesn't come across of in a way of, hey, do you want to buy something? Do you want to buy something? Do you want to buy something? Do you want to sell your house? Do you want to sell your house? Do you want to buy something? Do you want to buy something? No, exactly. We don't want to come across that way. So he does a good job at explaining that. It's about eight minutes long, but I wanted to share it with you this morning because I thought he did a really good job at showing us things that we should be doing to build relationships with the people around us. Will you hit the lights back there? Today, Thank we're you. talking about leads versus relationships. Which one do you want more of? Hey, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Today, I'm asking the question, what do you need more of, leads or relationships? Now, I know as you get that question from me, you're automatically going to say, Tom, I want a combination of both. Hear me out. So many of our clients have done such a magnificent job with their demand gen marketing, their social marketing, their email marketing, their direct mail, the way we do our open houses that we've let off some of the gas and some of the intentionality around simply doing the connections, the scaling the impossible, doing the, the little things that make such a big difference in building relationships. You know it, and I know it. Now, I'm not gonna call out some names, but if I thought about the last 30 days of a few private sessions, too far, like too often, too many people are saying, Tom, I'm doing everything, my business is going great, and I'll say, so how many of your past clients have you talked to in the last 30 days? How many people in your sphere have you talked to in the last 30 days? And I immediately get the X's over the eyes, and it's a sign of guilt. Now, let me ask you a question. Is there someone inside your database that we all value so much that simply isn't getting the nurturing, the connecting that they really deserve? Or have you allowed this and email and email and texting and everything else that we all know in all of our demand gen marketing to take over the relationship side of your business? I would challenge you to get a little old school with me. I've got four ways that you can do it to really increase the connection, the relatedness, and ultimately the community. And oh, by the way, here's a little secret. Yes, by staying top of mind and staying connected, of course, you're gonna generate more referrals, but I'd like you to try this out. How about we do everything I'm talking about, but we don't just have the intention of trying to get another referral or finding another listing or doing another deal. But instead, we just go deep with people because when you do that, good things always happen. So here's what I wrote down for you. Ready? Four things. Number one, easy one. Everybody's on Facebook. I don't remember anybody's birthdays anymore. How about you? <coughs> but Facebook does a nice job reminding me every day, here's seven of your friends and this is their birthday. So what if you took the time to call that person and say, Hey, Richard, I just wanted to reach out and wish you a happy birthday, man. What are you, like, finally 30, Richard? How old are you, Richard? 26, you rat bastard, right? 26, <laughs> happy birthday, and I would actually do that, right? So, so think about it like this. I'm making the phone call. Now you say, but Tom, like, I'm right there on Facebook. I can just send him a messenger. Yeah, you and everybody else. You can even post on there, hey, happy birthday, you and everybody else. We want to stand out. We want to connect at a deeper level calling that person and singing them happy birthday, calling that person and saying, I know you're getting inundated with phone calls today, but I just had to reach out and say happy birthday. By the way, if you use that as a script, guess what the vast majority of you are gonna say? My mom hasn't even called. She just commented on my Facebook page. <laughs> By making that extra phone call, and the good news is Facebook does it for you every day, you got three people, four people, seven people, eight people, two people, and none people, but guess what? Now all of a sudden, you're making that extra effort to go deeper. Number two on my list, I want you to call everybody in your entire database four times a year. Everybody in your entire database. Now I know your database looks like so many other clients I talk to. Here's my past clients, here's the people in my sphere, here's I have no idea who they are, and here's some real estate agents that I put inside my system. I want you to call everybody four times a year. So take your total number, 
divided by those 90 day increments of quarters. And is that two calls a day? Is it seven calls a day? Whatever it may be. And I want you to use the old Ford method. I think of a long time client, dear friend of mine, Gina Lafari, who now runs is the CEO of the franchise group for all of Berkshire Hathaway. We would always talk about the Ford method as an easy way to go deep and to connect. How's your family? How's your occupation, your work, your career? What do you have these days for recreation? What are you doing for fun, spring, summer, fall, whatever it may be? And then the last one is, what are your dreams? Now, you know me, I'm a big fan of that question. What are your dreams? What are you thinking about? What are your goals? What are you working on? You know, how valuable of a relationship, like, could you create with somebody? If you were the one person that said, hey, what are your goals? What are you thinking about? What are you dreaming about? Whether it's early retirement or getting married or having a child or buying a house or moving out of the state, whatever it may be, you know, being that resource for somebody, being that, that hub like I've talked about on a long time ago Tom Ferry show, where you really are the resource. You take on the fiduciary responsibility to help and bring value to every single person inside your database. Think about that. Good old Ford method, four times a year. And then number three, invite them to stuff. Look, at the end of the day, we're social creatures. We like to be invited to stuff. A friend of mine called me this morning, hey, such and such is opening a restaurant at the Beverly Center. Let's go. I'm like, sounds awesome. Now, guess what? He and I have a relationship. We're not crazy tight, but the more time we do that, the tighter we become, the more we think about each other, the more we want to bring value to one another. And that's the game. You should be doing the same. So I wrote down, whether it's a function, it could be a mega open house. By the way, I thought of a cute line. Um, I think we need to get the Kyle Whistle video where he talked about this at the summit a couple years ago. I think the, the exact quote went something like this. When you do an open house, if there isn't an after hours party, like post the open house, you didn't do it right. But I really thought about that and said, that's it. You know, Kyle's, like so many of our clients, takes on the community, takes on the relationships, and always wants to go deeper. And I know you're getting the, the difference that this is going to make. The last one I wrote down, and even though I referenced this earlier, consider if I'm doing the birthday wishes, if I'm doing the Ford, if I'm making that happen every time, if I'm inviting them to open houses and functions and parties and whatever it may be, I'm getting them face to face. And by the way, when we're there, we should always be looking for ways to connect people, right? Carol, oh my goodness, have you met Jillian? She's amazing at you know A, B, and C, and you know Carol's amazing at X, Y, Z, and connecting the people that you know. Being that you know connector in your network, very powerful, and again, keeps you top of mind. The last one is, every 90 days, send every single person in your system a text or a email. Now, I know you know email, but the great Seth Godin said, a lot of us are tired of getting email. And I know I send email, you send email, we all do. But that special me-mail is where you actually stop and say, hey, Richard, Thinking about you, buddy. Hope you're doing great. Where are you at with that conversation you had about your dream? Send. Just those little touches. That's what makes a relationship special and, again, keeps you top of mind. So I know right now you're watching this, and a lot of my longtime friends and you know clients are going, wait a minute, Tom, you've been demand gen, demand gen, grow your business, find more listings, and now you're telling us to slow down and build some deeper relationships? The answer is yes. Because my concern, as I've been saying to quite a few of these clients, is you know what, if you're not nurturing that relationship, if, you're, if all you do is call and say, hey, who do you know that's about buying or selling? If all you're doing is that, then that's all you're doing in the relationship. And last time I checked, those relationships don't last. Bring more value. Nurture those customers. This is just one campaign. We got all those other things we're gonna do to generate business. Do this, and I promise you, way more referrals, way more connections, way more community, way more relationships, and you'll just feel better about your business. Let me know your comments. Let me know your thoughts. I can't wait to read them. Remember, always your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your ability to build those long-lasting relationships, that's what rules. Hey, you're the... So what do you think about that? Will you get the lights for me, please? What do you think? How much more fun is it to call people and just talk to them about them? Now, I'm not saying to get on the phone and use, if you're going to use the Ford method, which I highly recommend, 
don't use the words, what do you do for recreation? Because <laughs> people are going to be like, uh, all right, this is, a, this is a weirdo on the phone. I don't even know who this guy is. But what do you do for fun? What are you doing for fun these days? Or look at their Facebook page before you even call them. You know, in that, in that way, most people post what they do a lot of the time. Some people post every single meal that they ever eat <laughs> on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or any of those things. You kind of can gear the conversation toward what you just saw about them. Um, I was at a uh, breakout session at um, <clears throat> Family Reunion and there was a guy um, from Toronto and uh, he really kind of changed his whole business model around Facebook and not posting content to his wall, but sending personal messages to 30 different people that he was friends with a day. And he said, you know, you need to make it your goal to make 5,000 friends on Facebook. And then when, and then he would use this method of when birthdays come around, you decide, one, do I know that person? Um, two, do I want to tell them happy birthday? And three, do I still want to be friends with them on Facebook? Who, who should I really be talking to? Or who do I have an even deeper relationship with that I may not be friends with there? And then he said that the 30 to 40 messages that he would be sending out every single day on Facebook would have a big return for him because he wouldn't ever mention real estate. But right there next to his name, it said his name and then Keller Williams Realty. So that was leaving an impression, but he made the whole conversation completely about them. People enjoy talking about themselves, whether they're going to admit that in person or not. When you walk up to someone and say, how are you? How is your family? It feels good. It feels good to get that question asked to you because then you know somebody cares about you and they want to know about what's going on in your life. Now, if you're going to ask that question, listen. I was uh, talking to someone the other day, and they brought up the Pareto Principle, um, uh, which is the 80-20 rule, in, in, in this form. You have two ears, you have two eyes, and you have one mouth. 80-20. Listen more than you're talking. And watch and be vigilant when you're having conversations with people, and because their body cues are going to tell you whether what they're saying is really matching what they're feeling and how the conversation is going, which is why it's important for me to bring in someone like a body language expert, because when we understand this as well as what's coming out, it takes our conversations to an even deeper level, an even higher understanding of what kind of relationship we have with the people around us. And the method that Tom Ferry used, where you reach out to people four times a year, we at Keller Williams have broken that down for you. It's on this wall right here. Do the database too. Choose two letters every single week and just call those people in your database because if you do that uh, every single week, there's, there'll be 13 weeks that are covered. 13 times two is 26. 26 times two is what? 52, there's 52 weeks in a year. You've now reached out to your database how many times? Four times for the entire year. So we've broken it down in a way where you don't have to uh, do what he talked about and look at your database and think, oh, God, oh my gosh, how many people do I need to call this week? Just call your A&W or your INQ or your T&J and break it down that way and just maintain those relationships because we're naturally programmed to when somebody asks us how is your family? Or no, when we ask somebody, how's your family? Guess what? The question usually right back is, how is your family? Or how's business going for you? The question normally that comes back to us is, how's business going for you? Because we're working with people who aren't necessarily, when, when, some, when someone has asked us a question, our natural reaction is, well, what am I going to ask in return? Because we want to keep conversations going we don't want to just answer questions and then there'd be dead silence and awkwardness. Nobody likes an awkward moment. And silence uh, can be a really, really, it can be a killer of a conversation. So we naturally want to keep the conversation going uh, instead of just answering the question and then turning around and leaving. Although there are some people out there like that. Um, <laughs> don't worry about those people. All right, anyone else take anything else away from that?
perfect. All right, so what's going on in the Market Center? We've got a uh, rebuttal roundtable tomorrow morning with Dave Snowberger and Marshall Tucker. If you haven't had an opportunity to come to that, it's an awesome educational moment. Uh, they um, share scripts and things like that with one another. They'll throw out um, uh, uh, different objections and uh, work on how to handle them together. Uh, these uh, last couple weeks, there have been about 10 people in here for that. Um, they just set up a couple tables here in the training room and they go through it. It's an awesome class. And then we've got Quantum Leap with Holly Prescott. Who's taken Quantum Leap before? All right, what'd you think about it? It was awesome. It was years ago when Gary taught it. When Gary taught it, yeah. Any, D Daniel, did you say you've taken it? I think I'm wrong, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've taken this class. It was probably one of, the, I think it is the most impactful class that I've ever taken that Keller Williams has offered um, because it really encouraged me to look deep inside and have a better understanding of who I am and uh, who I need to be for the people around me. Um, we're going to have that on the 18th of uh, April. It's going to be an all-day event. It will be at the um, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, if you're interested in it, let me know. Uh, we'll have more information coming out about it in the next couple of days. It's going to be an awesome class, though, so I want to uh, make sure you knew about that. Tomorrow, we're going to be having Seller Beware with Reba Saxon. We have room for like two more people. If anyone else is interested in taking that class with us, it's amazing. It talks about all the different ways that a buyer can get out of a contract. And uh, last time she taught it, there were 34. Uh, this time I think there's probably gonna be like 37 or 38. It's a great class. You do get continuing education credit for it. Uh, it's $90 to take the class because um, there's uh, eight hours of continuing That's education. Yes. $90 if you're a member of the MLS actually is no. how they're, no, it's ABOR? ABOR. Got it. $90 if you're a member of ABOR, $104 if you're not a member of the Austin Board of Realtors. So that'll be, what's that? Worth every penny. Yeah, absolutely worth every penny. It'll be right here in this room. Uh, all day tomorrow, I think we start, we're starting at uh, either 8.30 or 9. I can't remember off the top of my head. 8.30? 8.30 is. And the name's Seller Beware, <coughs> but it's good for both. I mean, it doesn't, yeah. it's great for both sides. Yeah, sure. it's great for everyone. And there are a couple of uh, seller outs of the contract, and I think she's also going to go over the new contract as well and talk about the additional ways that a seller can now get out of the contract. All right, so our building update. Avis kind of gave everyone a little bit of an update. Uh, if you haven't walked by there, look in the window. Uh, you'll see that they've gotten all the drywall up. They've taped and floated everything. Um, and now uh, we're talking about paint colors and all that stuff and ordering paint. Um, it's going to be... Uh, it's coming pretty quick. We'll probably be in there in, within 45 days. So we're getting pretty darn close. It's really, really exciting. Um, in the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to have an event down there where uh, we're going to give everyone Sharpies. And you can go write scriptures on the floor. You can write inspirational sayings on the floor. You can write uh, uh, UT is better than uh, A&M on the floor if you want to. You write whatever you want. Uh, or if you're the other way, A&M is way better than UT. I don't care. I'm not a... Uh, I'm from California, so um, I still don't understand all that. <laughs> um, but on the, I, the reason I say that is because on the floor underneath Avis's office in the Round Rock office, um, when she was in there, they had a big old argument on the floor under her office about UT and A&M. So um, that was pretty neat. She has some pictures of it that she showed me a while ago. So it's just a day where we're going to be able to put sayings that are going to be our foundation for our continued success within our market center, within our businesses, and within your lives. And uh, so that's gonna be really neat. And we'll have a pastor come and bless the building and everything like that. It's, just, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll have more information about that coming out in the next uh, couple of weeks. And then an ALC, or we'll have our ALC meeting and mastermind. It's going to be April 17th uh, at 10.30, and then our mastermind is going to be at noon. Who was at the, uh, the last mastermind that we had, the open house one? Good, a couple people. Was it beneficial? What was your biggest takeaway from it? Very creative. Yeah. Yeah. How? Uh, what's the best way to get contact information at in an open house? Sign up. Yeah. Another one that I shared that I heard of recently was, you know, the KW Mobile app that you have, or your uh, KW website that you have before you go to that website, or before you go to the open house rather, save the link for that specific open, or for that specific property in your phone. And when the people get there, 
pull out your phone and say, hey, you know, I'm not doing regular flyer. We're not doing regular flyers today. We're doing digital flyers. Uh, what's your cell phone number? I'm going to text you the link to the flyer that we have available for this property. And then you just text them a link directly to your web page. Guess what you've just done? You got their contact information. And uh, now you have guaranteed that it's correct because it went through or it didn't. If it didn't go through, you're going to say something along the lines of, it looks like I might have entered it incorrectly. Um, because then you're guaranteeing that you're getting the information correct and you have people that you can add to your database and follow up with. And you're sending them directly to your website. What's going to happen on your website? They're going to look at other properties too. And while you're sitting in there, you can send them the link to the mobile app which will update you on every single property that they start to search on uh, within your mobile app. So that was just another thing that we came up with in that class. And then uh, there were a few other great things. It is available online. I posted it to our Facebook page the other day. If you're interested in watching it, it's about an hour long. Some awesome stuff on there. The next one that we're going to talk about is leads and where do you find them? Uh, so we're going to have a whole mastermind session on that topic alone. And then uh, family gathering is going to be on April 19th at the Sheridan from four to six. It's gonna be the Jack's Lounge area, which is upstairs as soon as you walk in. And then Ignite, our Ignite class is going to be a little bit different this time. Um, we're changing some of the sessions around. Next Tuesday, Greg Deering is going to come and do a three hour leasing class. Um, if you haven't ever taken leasing before and you're interested in it, um, come. It's not, there's not gonna be a charge for this class at all. Um, and he's gonna, put everything that he would normally teach in six hours into three. The only reason he says that he teaches it in six hours is because people want three hours of extra credit, but I can really do it in three. So he said, I'm going to do it. So if you haven't done that, come and join us for that. And then on the 9th and the 11th and the 13th, we're going to do some, something really neat. On the 9th and the 11th, we're going to do contracts and negotiations. It's going to be two days um, from 12 to 3 each of those days. I'm going to teach that and we're going to go hands on with the contract. We're going to talk about negotiations. We're going to have uh, real play experience and we're going to go uh, through the contract and write contracts in that class as well so that you have the ability as soon as you're ready to go and sit down with a client, you know that you have the ability and the experience that you've had real situations with the contract. We're going to go through um, some different scenarios and things like that. We'll write the contracts up together. Uh, we'll all take a look at them, we'll share our information with one another, and we're going to present them to one another in the class so that we have real experience with the contract. And then uh, on the 13th, which is Friday the 13th, uh, maybe not the best day to do it, but we're going to do it anyways, um, we're going to have a lady from Plano come. Her name is Jalen Horton. Uh, she's from the KW Plano office, and she has crazy conversion skills um, from like phone calls and things like that. Uh, her uh, conversion ratio is about 50% of getting people into actual representation agreements when they actually call in and are interested in a property. So she's going to come and do an hour and a half class on that alone and share what she does to have such a good conversion ratio with the phone calls that she has coming into her. She's an awesome lady. I met her back in January and she's really excited to come and share that information with us here. When is that? It's going to be on Friday the 13th from 12 to about 1.30. And then um, at two o'clock on Friday the 13th, we're gonna have a 10.31 exchange class. So as soon as the class with Jalen is over, we're gonna go right into a 10.31 exchange class. This is a great class. It can give you a lot of uh, opportunities with people who may have thought that they couldn't do something. This is gonna help them be able to maybe purchase other homes and uh, do investments and things like that. It's a great <coughs> opportunity for you. <coughs> and then, I think that's about all we got on there. So let's go to uh, new listings. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Do you have that posted on our page? On the yes. Okay. It's, all, it's also on georgetowntraining.com. Okay. Any new listings? Yeah. Um, I've got a property that's back on the market. And okay. I'm begging for you guys to sell it super fast. Um, so it's a manufactured home in Liberty Hill. The address is 121 Terrace Cove. It's literally one turn off of 183, about five miles north of Seward Junction. The list price is going to be 17, or is 117. We have a appraisal that's in for an FHA, so that can move along with it if you have a client in that situation. The FHA retrofit's been done. It's a two bedroom, two bath, but it could be a three bedroom. They just took down a wall and it's got a detached two car garage that has 
a bathroom that's plumbed or septic. Um, the HOA is not being enforced currently, so you can see a variety of things in the neighborhood. Um, half an acre, really well maintained. <laughs> I like how you said you. No, it's in great shape. Like new carpet, it's it small. just it has. Um, they just expanded the living area and they took out a wall. So if you put the wall back, it still has the doorway and it still has a closet. Mm -hmm. So what's the address? It um, 121 Terrace. It's a manufactured home and we have a great lender that knows everything about it. And in case you have any questions or concerns, what's the square about footage it. of the whole thing? About 1,200. Yeah, yeah. Is that half acre? Yes. Anything else? Um, seven, uh, one seven, uh, one seven seven zero zero Kessler. It's been a long morning. Um, it's in Pflugerville. It's a five bedroom, three and a half bath, newly updated, um, kitchen, um, new carpets, new paint, right at 300,000. Okay. You know, any, anything else? Okay. Yes. I've got a <coughs> thing at, um, one zero three two high knoll that's at um, the summit at Rivery Park, four story brownstone. Um, it's got it's uh, listed at four seventy five. First floor is um, the garage and a guest slash generational bedroom, full bath. Um, second floor is living. Dining, um, kitchen, large kitchen, all open. Um, got a balcony out to the dining area. Um, third floor is the master bedroom, large bath, fireplace in both bedroom and I mean, kind of wraps around into the bathroom around the spa tub and and um, large closet. Off and then also the guest bedroom for the laundry up there on that floor. Um, both bedrooms have a, have a Juliet balcony. I didn't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they call it. Um, fourth floor is, um, uh, ha has a half bath, um, bar, wet bar, big closet, uh, huge closet for anything you want. Uh, and then it's got the outdoor patio, large outdoor patio that overlooks the city from the house. And they, uh, there are buildings some more, so I don't really know how how much of a view of the city you would, you would have after those are built, but they say they're only going to be three bedrooms, I mean three floors. Um, the outdoor patio has a, it's a covered patio, remote control, where you can open it up to see the stars or you can close it if it's raining or whatever. It's a real nice place. Of course, it's got an elevator on all four floors. I forgot to mention it does have a half bath on the second floor uh, where the kitchen and living area is on. So it's three bedrooms, I mean, yeah, three bedrooms, and it's three full baths. So what I hear you saying, Kent, is if they're interested in it, you could be their Romeo. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. <clears throat> All right, anyone else? Uh, it's coming on today. It's <clears throat> over in Parkview Estates. Okay. It's at 105 Rio Vista. There is a tenant that lives there, and they will be there till August. Okay. Uh, the price is... Good. And then I've got one coming up in Fountainwood at 2016 Fountainwood Drive. That's up to Jim Hogg. It's on 1.1 acres. It's a four-bedroom, two-bath. And they're getting it ready. They're staging it this week. Uh, Good. The price will be 405 Awesome. We just have 106 um, Reinhardt Court in um, Churchill Farms. It's a four, uh, two and a half. Um, all the bedrooms are up. It's... Um, Great in a cul-de-sac, um, big backyard. You know how they kind of big side yards, a little shallow in the back, but um, lots of lots of uh, land there to be 
botanical garden on one side and have trampoline and other stuff on the other. But um, we'd love to have somebody bring us a flyer. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got one more? Okay. Yeah. Um, the one that was actually on the sheet, uh, 1560 Kenner 287, it's in Liberty Hill. This is 15 acres. It's got a manufactured home on it. Did I mention this last week? I, I'm not sure if I did or not. I listened. Um, uh, 15 acres. It's got a manufactured home on it. It also has a secondary home that's 3,000 square feet, four bedrooms, three baths, that's been vacant for a while, so it needs some um, love and updating. It also has two barns on the property. One is 40 by 80 and two stories with an upper loading deck. It's great for um, a, an event venue. Um, we've got two septics, one well, um, lots of privacy, overlooks a, a pond, great for wedding venue, um, possible RV park, possible brewery, winery, all sorts of things. All right. How much is that one? 550. Anyone else? Yes, Jessica. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, we have one Salt Spring Court coming in the village on Friday afternoon, probably four bedroom, two baths, 2455 square feet. It's going to be listed at 315. We're also going to have an open house Saturday. Um, 1036 Shinnecock's coming up, four bedroom, two and a half baths, over 2700 square feet. It's going to be listed around 460. Um, 208 Cascade, Cascade, however you say that, on the McCoy side of the village. Um, it's about 3,200 square feet, four bedroom, three and a half bath, office, media room. The master and the office are down. It's going to be listed at 367.5. Um, we have another one on 101 Cameron Court. It's not listed yet. We have the sign listing agreement, but they're looking for what they're going to purchase. It's a four bedroom, two bath, attached two car garage, detached one car garage workshop, um, about a third of an acre. It's around 1,900 square feet. We're going to list around 260, 265. And then I have a pocket listing out in Dale. It's about 50 acres, two fully stocked ponds, 2,500 square foot, one story house at 540. All right. Are they Jane? willing to subject that pocket listing off at 2,200? Talk to me. Okay. Jamie? Mm -hmm. um, I have several coming soon. Uh, 125 Village Common. Uh, it's about just under 2,000 square feet. It's a 3-2 with downstairs master. Um, new, new fence, new carpet um, and flooring being done. Um, probably between 275, 279. Um, that is going on the market mid-April. Okay. Uh, coming soon in May, 2307 Amelia in Paloma Lake. Um, probably around, uh, price to be determined, but it, it's a uh, Two story, it's a four, two and a half um, with a study and a third car garage, and it has a pool. And okay. the pool is also fenced in separate from the backyard. Um, I have uh, coming soon in Colleen, 1701 Moonlight, um, updated flooring, um, paint, um, and some fixtures, uh, 94 9. 3 2, right? And it's a 3 2, yeah, sorry. Um, and then I have coming soon um, some land. Mm -hmm. I have 152 acres. Um, it would be great for an airstrip. Mm -hmm. If somebody's looking for a private airstrip, um, it also has a 3-2 um, a that's being completely remodeled right now um, with a liqueur stables and an outbuilding. Um, so we're looking um, 12, 12 five an acre. Um, and it's in Florence. So right off of 183 and in between FM 970 and uh, 138. So right in between that area. Um, I also have 37 acres on County Road 204. Um, uh, these have very minimal restrictions. So it, like no junky cars, no trash piles, no mobile homes, um, and no public gun range. Barnos are okay. Okay. Um, also coming soon, um, I've got about 17 or 18 10.01 acre tracks on County Road 236. Um, it's actually a 500 acre parcel that is split diagonally between Williamson County and Burnett County. Uh, the Burnett County side runs for about 129. The premium lots are going to be on the Wilco side. Um, they have trees. The Burnett County side has views. 
for days. I can see sewage. Views of the Williamson County side? Uh, <laughs> no, <yeah. just> <laughs> I said they have views of the Williamson County side. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, but the trees, uh, you get about 325 uh, foot of road frontage or all road frontage lots. Um, they go back about 14, 15 square feet. So um, you're set pretty far back off the road. Um, 129 to 149. Um, and I'm expecting those prices to go up in the next 30 days. So, rolling topography, um, and there's a electric. Creek. I'm sorry. I said rolling topography, a little bit of creek, all those types right. of things. Right, it's got it's got it's both beautiful. sides of Clear Creek. Um, seller's really great. Um, he's willing to put ponds in for people. He's got equipment to do that. He's a rancher out in that area, and he's got um, he lives just around the corner by Pilot Knob. So. Um, All right, anyone else? Got one. Yeah, Laura. I've got one coming up in Austin. It's in the Westwood High School District. It's three bedroom, three bath. It's in Doc Honey's Village, which is right next to the Doc Honey's mm -hmm. Country Club. Nice. So it'll be about two to three weeks. It's probably going to be around 600000 Woo! Very neat house built in 76. Lots of charm. She's doing a lot of work on it right now. Good. And I have a couple of buyer needs if we're ready for those. We'll get there in just a minute. Does it, are there any more listings? Yes. Man, I love this. We've just spent 10 minutes on listings. Way to go, guys. Um, these are coming to Sun City. I have a Rio Grande, which is a large one. I can't remember, 24 square feet. Uh, two bedroom, a lovely study, a living dining area, and a family room off the kitchen with uh, a fireplace on a beautiful lot. It's priced at $395. Should be on the market um, hopefully by this weekend or early next week. I was opposite. I had a little small one, 116 Clover Pass. is just under 1,000 square feet. Uh, one bedroom, two bath, and a study backs up to a small pocket green belt. Very nice. All new paint on the inside, new flooring on the inside. It's priced at 195 um, And two others that will be coming up a little bit later uh, at some point. But if anyone's looking for Sun City properties, let me know. I have one that's almost half an acre. It's a pie-shaped lot with 37 trees. Wow. So if you like, you know, trees like that, which some people like, some won't like that size there. But it's a, a buoy plan. Uh, will be priced at 330. Should be up in mid-April. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, we're coming soon in Leander in Vista Ridge, uh, 1411 Shamia's Court. Um, should be ready in about two weeks. Uh, it's going to be priced at 325. It is a little over 3,300 square feet, master down, three bedrooms, two full baths upstairs, plus two huge, completely separate game rooms upstairs. Um, it's at the end of the cul de sac, so it's a nice pie shaped lot, trees in the back, covered patio, whole thing. So. Awesome. Anyone else? All right, how about price improvements? No? Okay. I reduced my bar over in Taylor to 500000 You can buy a bar in Taylor for $500,000. nine acres. With nine acres. And a house. Two houses. <laughs> nine acres, two houses, and a bar, $500,000. There you go. And more. <laughs> hey, does we'll, the we'll bar... We'll get rid of the and more if you like. <laughs> does the bar come stocked? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, buyer needs. Yeah. I need, um, preferably Georgetown, 450 and under... Uh, an acre plus the house can need updated, but they really want a pool. So I need a pool, an acre, Georgetown, 450 and under. Does the pool have to be in the ground? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I have a pocket listing I forgot to mention. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, I have uh, about 11 and a half acres on County Road 254. It's got a 7,400 square foot uh, barn. On it that was just constructed a year ago. Um, it's got a 1,500 square foot uh, unfinished apartment, um, but it's already been uh, like it's got lumber and some sheetrock up, and uh, I want to say the build out's probably anywhere between 20 and 25 thousand. Okay. Um, the actual 7,400 square foot barn has the entrance ways for the giant rolling doors. The rolling doors are on the property. It cost somebody about a thousand dollars to get those installed. Um, there's no hunting deer on this property, but you can hunt quail, dove, duck, hog, whatever. Um, the owner would be living on the property as well. He's got the other 30 acres next to it. So, um, two forty. How many acres? Eleven and a half. Where is it? County Road 254 Bertram. Wow. Um, All right. And it is a very unique opportunity.
opportunity because it also has some corrals in there. You can literally drive straight into the barn. Um, it's got about a 14 by 16 um, storage room right next to the apartment, and you've got about 200 feet of concrete next to where you drive through the barn. So he's got all of that. It's beautiful. Okay. So if you want to see it, just call me and we'll get your people out there. Awesome. Uh, buyer, any, any other buyer needs? Yes, Daniel. Uh, 80 plus acre cattle ranch, anywhere within an hour and a half of here. Reason for that, uh, their current ranch is, uh, or cattle lease, excuse me, um, it backs up to Santa Rita and the development's up to the property line at this point. So it could be six months, could be next week that they're like, y'all need to get out of here. Um, but as soon as possible, I'd like to find something like that. All you come talk to me after the meeting. Okay. Anyone else? Any other buyer needs? Laura? Laura? Oh, I'm sorry. You're good. Yeah, I needed that one that Jamie has, except I need it in Birch or in the Florence or Gerald or Georgetown, maybe Liberty Hill. They don't want to be too far. But they want about 10 acres, maybe a little bit more. They'd like to have two homes on it. And we're looking at the 300, 350 range. Okay, perfect. Anyone else? All right. That's not our sponsor today. I don't know why that's on there. Okay, right come on in. <laughs> How are you guys today? Morning. Watch your step. <laughs> come on in. Tell us about yourself. Oh, thank you. Great. Um, put my glasses on here. Great. Well, we're both with Coventry Homes, and I'm in Wolf Ranch. I'm Diane Rebel. I want to. Thank y'all for having us this morning. It's always a privilege to get to speak to you all. And I just wanted y'all to know that a, a really cool thing that's happening. You may have already received an invitation from our developer, Hillwood in Wolf Ranch. We're having our big grand opening of the, our event center called The Den. And it's a resort pool and amenity center. And it's gonna be fabulous, but we're having a great, a planned event that's it's on April 5th. And it starts at 10 a.m. So if um, our realtors arrive, they go to our model homes and we're giving gifts away in each model home. I think there's five model homes. Coventry and Wilshire is on one end and Coventry is on the other. We're both the same company, the same builder. So, but they're giving away um, like Kendra Scott sets and Ray-Ban glasses in the models. <laughs> and then, um, the developer, like all for throughout the event, is giving away five thousand dollars in cash, and so it's going to be great. It's going to be VIPs and realtors, and um, so if you arrive at the den, they also have a valet parking, and then the Eastview High School band is performing, and we're having ribbon cutting ceremony, uh, welcoming like the team of Hillwood, which is the Ross Perot company. And the mayor is going to be there, and then we're have a lunch reception, and you can just tour the den, the mini center, and there'll be the prize announcements during this. It's going to be from 10 to 12:15, but you should have all received an invitation. Mary Jane's going to send out them again, but if you didn't, just let us get your email address, and we'll get you an invitation. And so, th these are our Wolf Ranch brochures that shows our mini center and what Wolf Ranch is going to be like in the development. So I just want to pass these around if y'all want to take them. Um, I have inventory homes available. I have a five bedroom, three car garage, and a four bedroom, um, three car. And all of them come with um, two bedrooms on the first floor. So just wanted to cut that kind of short because I could talk about the houses a long time. Don't mind if I just pass these around and that's Go for really it. all I have. And I'll turn over to Lisa. Take it away, Lisa. It. Also, one more thing, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the Never mind, I take that back. Yeah. Okay. Just kidding. At the new Dan, the mini center, they're going to open it up for anytime anyone wants to have meetings or meet clients or have a conference. We have it set up for um, our realtor community to use the, the Dan. So awesome. I think you can take it away now. Okay, okay. Sorry maybe now. Good morning, KW. How are y'all? Um, I don't know if Diane mentioned this because I was hunting up that really fancy bowl. Well, y'all try not to be too impressed. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we pay relocation fees. Not a lot of builders do. 
So keep that in mind. If he's got a reload, you don't have to lose out on that. You bring him to us, we'll bag him for y'all. We'll make it really, really simple. <laughs> My neighborhood, if uh, I know several of y'all have come out to visit me, and thank you very much. Always good to see our, you know, our familiar faces and friends. Um, we love realtors. One thing I am super big on is I'm going to protect you guys. You got that rogue buyer, which we've all had them, that uh, is going to go out on their own, and you might lose out on that. Call me, text me, just tell them their name. I'm going to protect you guys. We do not give away our realtor uh, commissions to buyers. Another very important fact. We do 85% of our business is from realtors, so I'm going to protect you guys. Been there, done that. Um, I figured you guys might enjoy this. Here's some. Here's 10 fun facts that I dug up. Warren Buffett is the richest man in the world and still lives in his original home that he that he purchased in 1956 for 350, uh, 31,500. Brass doorknobs. Does anybody like those again yet? Those are actually, I know, and they're coming back. I don't, I don't know why. Brass doorknobs are antibacterial. They kill, they kill bacteria. Who knew? In Scotland, homeowners, when they pay off their front door, they paint it red. I mean, when they pay off their mortgage. Um, there's also this guy that had one red, Keller Williams red, paperclip. He kept on trading it enough times till he traded for a house. Kind of funny. Uh, back in the Depression area, Pretty boy Floyd uh, was a gangster, but was considered a hero because when he would rob banks, he would destroy the mortgage documents. <laughs> so people got <laughs> free homes. I want that. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> the Monopoly game was originally created uh, and designed to teach the players that that capitalism was actually a uh, was actually broken. I thought that was interesting. Never knew that. Played that for a hundred years. India's richest person built a built a one million dollar home that has twenty seven floors in it, on top of six parking garage floors that can house one hundred sixty eight cars. Wow! In New York, not in Texas, it is a legal requirement to say if a house is haunted. <laughs> I think that's true in Louisiana, right? Anybody know? I think that's true. Anyway, how yeah. do you prove it? Yeah. Ghostbusters. How do you prove it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the Burj Khalifa in, in the United Arab Emirates is so tall that you can watch the sunset from the base floor, take the elevator all the way up, and see it again. Wow. In China, builders have been able to build a 30 story, 30 story skyscraper in as little as 15 days. Kind of fun, kind of fun. I wouldn't want to go in it. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, thanks and no thanks. Um, do we have the bowl, Doug? There you go. I'm going to make you pick again. Oh, gosh. So you get to be the bad guy. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait, one more. I'm going to stay here while so, yeah, he, He's been watching us through the window. Yeah, he's going right. through the drive-thru. <laughs> Guys, always, it's a pleasure coming here. Ah, Laura. <laughs> That's exciting. Thank you again for having us. We've got a great lunch. I'm going to leave flyers out for you guys, as Diane did. And please come by and see us. We love Kelly Williams. Oh, she's corrected me. We're paying on the closing costs. Like, even if you have a bar that there's a contingency or signs up, I know it's ending at the end of this month, but they can use it to close in April or May. But as long as we get them on paper, we can use the note. We'll pay all the closing costs. So, so awesome. I'm sure we'll remember that. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you. Let's give it up for them again. Us. All right. And for Ignite, this, uh, like, Ignite is open to everyone anytime. I just wanted to make sure that for the new things that we're doing this time, you know that you can come to any of those sessions. I want to see this room packed out for that Friday the 13th session with, um, uh, with Jalen, who's coming from Plano. 
because that can really make a huge impact on your business. Simply asking the right questions is what she's going to teach us to do in order to make your lead conversion go through the roof. So I wanna make sure you're here for that on Friday the 13th, it's gonna be at noon. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you later, enjoy lunch. Can we come to that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.